tongue Weighed down with words too Over dramatic To the future My eyesight is going The group's four members first came together in Wilmette, a bedroom community north of Chicago around 2001. Vocalist and guitarist Patrick Stump, bassist and lyricist Pete Wentz, drummer Andrew Hurley and guitarist Joe Troman had all taken part in various bands connected to Chicago's underground hardcore scene. Most notably Hurley drummed for Race Trader, the furiously political metalcore outfit whose brief output was both a rallying point and sticking point within the hardcore community, as Fall Out Boy the quartet used the unbridled intensity of hardcore as a foundation for melody-drenched pop-punk with a heavy debt to the emo scene. They debuted with a self-released demo in 2001, following it up in May 2002 with a split LP that also featured Project Rocket, for which Hurley also drummed, the band remained with the label for the release of a mini-LP, Fall Out Boy's Evening Out With Your Girl, but a bidding war of sorts was already in full swing. Fall Out Boy eventually signed a deal with Fueled by Ramen, the Florida-based label co-owned by less than Jake drummer Vinny Fiorello, but also received an advance from Island Records to record a proper debut album. The advance came with a right of first refusal for Island on Fall Out Boy's next album, but it also financed the recording of Take This to Your Grave which occurred at Butch Vig's Smart Studios compound in Madison, Wisconsin with producer Sean O'Keefe at the helm, Take This to Your Grave appeared in May 2003 and Fall Out Boy earned positive reviews for subsequent gigs at South by Southwest and various tour appearances. Their breakout album The Ambitious from Under the Cork Tree followed in spring 2005, quickly reaching the top 10 of Billboard's album chart and spawning two top 10 hits with Sugar Were Going Down and the furiously upbeat Dance Dance, the album went double platinum and earned the musicians a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. Fall Out Boy's underground star status driven by the especially extroverted Wentz, who also gained exposure with his clothing line his Decay Dance record label and eventually a celebrity relationship with Ashley Simpson had boiled over into the mainstream. They toured extensively supporting the album with international tours, arena shows, TRL visits, late-night television gigs and music award shows. Without taking a break the guys then hunkered down to work on their follow-up record with From Under the Cork Tree producer Neil Averin, Infinity on High whose title was taken from a line in one of Van Gogh's personal letters, appeared in early February 2007 spearheaded by the hit single This Ain't a Scene, It's an Arms Race. The album continued Fall Out Boy streak, debuting at number one on the Billboard charts and going platinum one month later, released in early 2008 the CD or DVD package Live in Phoenix documented the band's strength as a flashy live act, while the full-length studio effort Folia Du followed later that year. Recording sessions for Folia Du were tough, prompting the band to take an open-ended hiatus soon after the album's release, Joe Troman and Andy Hurley joined a new band Damn Things, during the interim while Wentz teamed up with the new vocalist B.B. Rexa to form Black Cards. Stump took the opportunity to launch a solo career, ditching his band's emo pop music in favor of a more electronic, R&B-influenced sound, Stump released his debut solo album Soul Punk in 2011, and the album didn't catch fire despite some positive reviews. Pete Wentz spent time with a new band called Black Cards, but that also didn't really go anywhere and it wasn't long before rumors of a Fall Out Boy reunion began to swirl. In February 2013 the band confirmed that the rumors were true they had reunited for a new album called Save Rock and Roll and an accompanying tour. Preceded by the single My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark, Save Rock and Roll was released in April of 2013 and promptly debuted at number one on the US charts. The band stayed busy during the subsequent year as well creating a video for each song on the album, recording the punk-inspired EP Pax AM days and headlining tours that reached America, Europe and Australia. In late 2014 Fall Out Boy premiered a new single Centuries, the first glimpse of their sixth album American Beauty American Psycho. 
Produced in part by J.R. Rotem and Sebastian, it combined Fall Out Boy's core punk pop sound with elements of electronica, R&B, and hip-hop. The album debuted at number one when it was released the following January and it stayed on the charts thanks to the Munsters sampling single Luma Thurman, which was certified platinum. The band released a remix version of the album called Make America Psycho Again in October 2015. In April 2017 Fall Out Boy revealed that their forthcoming seventh album Mania would be released later that year. The announcement was accompanied by the album's first single Young and Menace. Neither Young and Menace nor the second single Champion wound up cracking the Billboard charts, so the band headed back into the studio to rework Mania in the latter half of 2017. This version of Mania appeared in January 2018 and debuted at number one on the Billboard charts upon its release. In September 2019 Fall Out Boy collaborated with Wyclef Jean on the single Dear Future Self, which appeared on their second anthology, Believers Never Die Greatest Hits Volume 2.